Welcome to video 26 in the Marine Invertebrate Biology course series, and this is Class Asteroidea, the second video in Echinodermata. Asteroidea are sea stars. So let's start looking at their general characteristics. Um, so they have a through gut, which means that they have a separate mouth and anus. The mouth is on the bottom side. This is the side that the oral surface with the mouth, oral, is the side that faces the, the substrate and the aboral surface, the side that you see when you swim up to them, is the top. And that's where the anus is. It's right in the middle and the things can f float away in the current. Madripora, which we saw in the last video, is up at the surface. And that the extensions are called arms. The mouth in the center and the two feet coming out Hopefully you've gone to the videos to watch the tube feet in action on urchins and sea stars. Um, the ambulatory is a root which means uh, able to move, able to walk. And so a walking groove would be another word for the ambulacral groove. And this is where the tube feet come out. Now this thing can widen out a little bit or it can seal into a very narrow gap, and that is when it widens out, the tube feet can stick out a little bit more. And there they are, tube feet. And then when it's uh, sealed up, then predators can't get into their into it very easily. This the when you look at a micrograph or look through a microscope or look at a close up of the, the surface of a starfish the skin of it. It's really quite amazing. So um, I'll go to black on this one. So these little projections right here, these little finger-like projections are called papulae. P-A-P-U-L-L-A-E. Plural papulae. Papula would be singular. And those little projections increase the surface area. Uh, for gas exchange. These things don't have gills or anything like um, uh, blood vascular system. So what they do is they, when they move, it pumps water in and out of these little projections. And where so with all that surface area, they can, um, they can uh, diffuse a, quite a lot of oxygen in and CO2 and wastes out. Then they also have these amazing things, which are called the dislaria. And you'll see two sizes. So we'll look at those in the next video. Uh, the reason you never see anything growing on, on the surface of a starfish, even though it's a, uh, a place for settlement, like these spines right here, um, something could grow on them. Really, if you put anything in the water in, uh, in the ocean and then pick it up six months later, it's going to be covered in crusting organisms that have, that have settled on the surface, unless it's, you know, like antifoul or copper or something. But, um, things will settle on it and grow on it. And that's exactly what would happen except for these little pinchers right here act as a way to keep things from landing and settling. So larvae that will um, will be crushed up by these things um, that might settle on the, the surface of the starfish. Uh, and here's a picture of a, a pedicillaria. Don't worry about all the terminology about the anatomy of it. Here is a close-up of one that is on um, a fish catching the distal area. This thing can actually grab fish and move them around to the bottom of the, uh, move them around to the mouth once they, they catch them. Some of these things are actually quite poisonous too. So there are some um, ones where, uh, that are considered very dangerous by the, the traditional Japanese pearl divers. Uh, so there are a couple of sizes. You saw the big ones and then these other ones that come up around the spine when the thing is threatened. So one thing that's interesting to do with a 11-armed uh, starfish is if you have a dive club and you put it on the back of the starfish, that all these pedicillary will actually grab onto the dive club and you can pick it up with your hand flat. There we go. Here's the Cosinasterius. Uh, I think we've already touched on these. Okay. 
and we've already mentioned the ambulacral groove, which has ambulacral spines. So the spines, if you um, uh, run your like a probe or your finger down the middle of the ambulacral groove what will happen is these things will close up and Like if you put your fingers together into uh, Where your fingers come across then these things will actually interlace and become uh, extra protection against anything getting into bite away at the fleshy tube feet so how do starfish eat? These things are predators, and they are often predators of shellfish, but the, one of the interesting, most interesting things about them is that they have external digestion, digestion outside their body. Um, and so they can come up, and this was a starfish that's been turned over that's trying to pry open this, uh, this muscle. So all it needs to do is come up and just get a tiny little crack in the muscle shell just open it up with all its tube feet, pull and pull and pull, and it's got little muscles that can lock into place uh, for hours. Whereas, you know, like your our muscles would get very tired after a couple of minutes of pulling on a, say, a tug of war rope or something like that. These things can just pull and then lock into place. And so eventually, all they need is um, a tenth of a millimeter crack, and then they can slip their stomach out of their mouth and into the shell of the, of the, the, um, shellfish the bivalve and start digesting so um, they actually have these massive digestive glands because so much of their digestive fluid can get washed away and these are called pyloric cica you'll notice that they have two stomachs uh, we'll talk about that uh, the cardiac stomach and the pyloric stomach and so what happens is these these digestive glands fill up each arm. They're a very big paired organ. And then at certain times of the year, the gonads can be quite big um, and the arms can be absolutely full of, um, of, of eggs or sperm. Um, other times of the year, these things are just tiny little um, uh, non-full gonads and, re and rest. And then obviously the the water vascular system coming out. Um, okay. Okay, the large stomach, cardiac stomach, the first of them um, is on the oral surface. That's the one that goes out of the body. And then the smaller stomach, the pyloric stomach is above it and they can uh, slurp things in. Once they've started digesting things outside the body, they can slurp some of the liquids up into the, the pyloric stomach and digest things internally, which is more efficient. Um, they are, in terms of reproduction, most of them are dioecious, okay, as we've said before. Um, and they broadcast spawn, and they can be incredibly fecund, which means um, fecund means is a measure of how many offspring you can produce. And uh, some female starfish can produce as many as two and a half million eggs in a year. And here they are um, out of the gonoducts, just releasing sperm or eggs. And they go into this classic uh, pose as a crown of thorns starfish. And again, there's a cushion star releasing some very tiny eggs, hard to see. Uh, but they also can reproduce asexually, so not just sexually by broadcast spawning. They can split into two, which is called fission, as we've talked about before. And um, then they can regenerate um, even uh, one missing limb, or even if they've just got a portion of that, that central disc, they can regenerate the entire new starfish. So a really interesting uh, thing to do if, um, well, it's a, it can happen. I wouldn't recommend that you do it, but you can take a starfish and put it into a bucket of water, a seawater, and that seawater as the starfish sits in there and wheeze into it will get really foul. And um, eventually the starfish will go, okay, well, if I, I'm going to die in this environment. So 
what I'm going to do is split into different parts and each of the arms will cr separate and crawl away from the other parts of the uh, of the body. Each, they'll just crawl into five segments. They'll just dissociate and then crawl away and hopefully at least one of them will find a place that they can that it can survive and regrow. And here's what happens. So here it would be a new um, bunch of of arms regrowing from the central disc with the original arm here. And here's one that's split in half, uh, which is a very efficient way of reproducing when there's a lot of food around. It's called fission, as we saw in platyhelminthes. Right, fission. And this is a beautiful uh, firebrick starfish, and we're going to leave it at this point. And um, this is the end of the asteroid video. We'll come up next uh, in the next video talking about Ophiuroidea, which are brittle stars.